الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال جل وعلا في كتابه المجيد وفرقانه الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تلك الدار الآخرة نجعلوها للذين لا يريدون علوا في الأرض ولا فسادا والعاقبة للمتقين وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Honorable scholars, respected brothers, elders, mothers and sisters Among the many advisors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us through the Quran and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through the hadith is to always keep good intentions. As Muslims, our intentions, our endeavors should always be noble, should always be clean, should always be pure. Those sisters that are studying in this institution, there is a great consolation for a girl, for a student, for anyone acquiring the sciences of Islam. The hadith appeared in Mishkat Sharif in the first volume, narrated on Hassan Basri, Mursalan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ جَاءَهُ الْمَوْتُ وَهُوَ يَتْلُبُ الْعِلْمَ لِيُحْيِي بِهِ الْإِسْلَامِ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ النَّبِيِّينَ تَرَجَةٌ وَاحِدًا If a person is engaged in the acquisition of the sciences of Islam, and he or she happens to meet a faith and a death while studying the senses of Islam, then for such a person is the consolation that their abode, their rank, their position will be one just below the prophets. One just below the prophets. Again, the key word in the hadith is what is the motivation? What is the motivation? What is the intention behind it? Often today, we find a person gets married, unfortunately, even after getting married, there is disloyalty, there is infidelity. Why? The Prophet wasallam says, when a person gets married, three people are in the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three people are divinely in the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Annaqihu alladhi yuridun aqab. That bride or groom, that male or female, who gets married with the primary aim of safeguarding their chastity, that Allah promises the fulfillment of that desire of that via the institution of marriage. But if a person gets married and his intention, her intention is not to protect their chastity, their morality, their integrity, then we see it happening before us that people are married, yet unfortunately there is illicit relation, there is indulgence, there is evil. So what is the key word in the hadith? أَنَّاكِحُ الَّذِي يُرِيدُ الْعَفَى A person who gets married with a primary aim that, Oh my Allah, I want to be chaste. I want to live a life of morality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make that possible. So whatever intention a person has, I was happy to know that, mashallah, many of the girls here are studying and concurrently with the Islamic studies, there is academic degrees as well. I often say to many sisters, they form from time to time and they say that, you know what, I want to pursue a degree and I want to have an Islamic degree, which is wonderful, it's great, it's meritorious, I want to have an academic degree. But sometimes the girl would say that the reason why I want to pursue an academic degree is that if along the life, uh, while I'm married, things are not stable in my relation and my husband drops me, then at least I have some financial backup. And I often say that should never be the motivation of a sister. We think positive of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We plan good. We do not, we do not uh, pursue an academic degree in the event I will be divorced, in the event I will be widowed. No, I have a passion to serve people. I have a desire to, to empower myself. That is wonderful. That is great. It's awesome. Umm Salma radiallahu anha was one of the very few women who were literate in Makkah Mukarramah at the time when the general literacy levels were very low. كانت من النساء القليلات النادرات التي يبتكها في الجاهلية. We know in the pre-Islamic era there were a handful of people that were literate. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was divinely unlettered and the wisdom of that has been explained and explored in the books of Hadith. 
But among the handful of women that were literate, one was Umm Salma radiallahu anha. She was very intelligent, she was very learned, and she had a great level of literacy. Abid ibn Sayyim rahmatullah alayhi sayyim, one side was her literacy, her academic literacy. Furthermore, her Islamic verdicts were so profound that he said if you gather the Islamic fatawa of Umm Salma radiallahu anha, it will perhaps be the greatest and the richest legacy of any woman in the annals of Islamic history. So here you have an amazing woman, Umm Salma radiallahu anha, on both fronts. So the point I'm saying to you, my sister, is at all times keep your intention clean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge us by our intention. Inna Allah katab al-hasanati wa sayyiat. So ma bayyana thalik. Fa man amma bi hasanatin fa dam ya'malha kutibat lahu hasanatun kamira. You did the hadith, it appears in Riyadh al-Salihin as well. If a person sincerely intends good, if a person sincerely intends good, and due to circumstances he or she cannot live up to that good, but the intention was honest, was sincere, was wholesome, was pure, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward that woman proportionate to her intention. And there is a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ سَأَلَ اللَّهَ الشَّهَادَةَ فِي بَلَّغَهُ اللَّهُ مَنَازِلَ الشُّهَدَى وَإِمَّا تَعَلَى فِرَاشِهِ That if a person sincerely asks Allah for the death of a martyr, Allah will elevate him to the rank of martyrs even if he dies on his bed. Even if he dies on his bed. The point I am illustrating and emphasizing and harping on is keep noble endeavors in mind. In the hadith of Bukhari, this has positively it has good effect. The negative rule Implications are equally devastated. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said before Qiyamah the time will come where killing will become common. لَا يَدْرِ الْقَاتِلُ فِي مَقَتَلْ وَلَا الْمَقْتُورِ فِي مَقُتِلْ The murderer won't know why he's murdering. The murdered won't know why he's been murdered. كِلَاهُمَا فِي النَّارِ Both will go to hell. Both will go to hell. Sahaba said, O Nabi of Allah, we can understand the crime of the murderer. But what is the offense of the murder? Is he not an innocent party? And the Prophet said, إِنَّهُ كَانَ حَدِيثًا عَلَىٰ قَتْلِ صَاحِبِهِ He had the equal intention of murdering. It says that fate played out and he died before. Otherwise his aspiration was no different to the murderer. And he will be judged by his intention. And despite being a victim to the brutality of the victor, dying at the hands of the murderer, but on the day of Siyamah, they both will be destined to hell given the evil intention with which he died. So that gives us an intention. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ أَخَذَ أَمْوَانَ النَّاسِ يُرِيدُ أَدَاءَهَا حَدَّ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ One hadith I want to quote on this regard. Speaking about before Siyamah, it's a very lengthy hadith. But one portion of it, an extract of the hadith is, when Iraq was conquered and some spoils of the war were brought, so they were presented before Allah Rabbi Allah. And among the spoils of the war, there was a particular meal, a delicacy, a sweet meal. فَعُرِبَ عَلَيْهِ فِي الْغَلَائِمْ سِلَالٌ مِنْ أَنْوَاعِ الْخَبِيثِ مِنْ أَصْفَرْ وَأَحْمَرْ From the food and the things that were presented, there was some sweet meat, red and yellow sweet meat that was presented before Allah Rabbi Allah. فَدَاقَهُ Allah Rabbi Allah tasted it. فَوَجَدَهُ طِيبَ الْرِيحِ طِيبَ الْتَعْمِ Allah رضي الله عنه found it to be tasty, it was palatable, it was scrumptious, it was wonderful. And then he said, مثلا يَا مَغْشَرَ الْمُعَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْفَاقِ لَيَقْتُلَنَّ مِنْكُمُ الْإِبْنُ أَبَاهُ وَالْأَخُ أَخَاهُ عَلَىٰ هَذَا الْتَعْمِ By Allah, a time will come, a son will kill his father to secure this meal. And a brother would slay his brother and his sibling to eat this very food. Keep me away from this food. Keep me away from this food. Then he said, take this food. Thumma umira bihi fa umira ila awlaadi man kutilu bayna yaday Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min al-muhajirin wa al-ansar. He said, if there's anybody deserving of this food, then it is the children of those people whose fathers were martyred with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battles. Give it to their children. I don't want to get myself into the fear. For food like this, a brother will kill his sibling, and the explicit word is a son will slay his father. 
Again, another hadith about the nobility of intention. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man akhaza amwal al-nasi yuridu adaha azzallahu anhu. If a person in life has to ever borrow a circumstances, money, but his intention is, I want to pay. He's clean, he's noble, his intentions are clean. Because in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about, and this is in particular for men in business, and that Allah ta'ala signals a warning, a very, very stern warning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about three categories of people who violate their promises. Initially, a person makes a contract, gives a word, in whatever way. You give your word, Islam tells you, honor your word. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ قَدَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْ كَاسَا فَاسْتَقِذُونَ أَيْمَانَكُمْ فَقَلَمْ بَيْنَكُمْ أَنْ تَكُونَ أُمَّةٌ هِيَ أَرْضَى مِنْ أُمَّةٌ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ There was a woman in Mecca that was mentally disadvantaged. She had a mental disorder. Mental, you know, mentally she was impaired. So what she used to do, she used to, she had some wool and she used to knit. She used to sew. And when she used to complete a garment by the evening, she had knit it, then she would break it into pieces. So all day she was knit, she was sewed, she was put together something, and just when she is about done with it, that's the time she would break it into pieces. Now obviously she was mentally impaired, so that's why she did it. There's no logical explanation. She has a mental disorder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala signal a word of caution from her life. That let it not be you give someone your word, like you let it, you sewing, you contracting, you finalizing, you concluding. And when you have the last straw and you want to wrap up the whole thing, you break it into pieces. You break it into shreds. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ قَدَتْ قَدْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْ كَاتَا فَاتَّقِذُونَ أَيْمَانَكُمْ كَفَلًا بَيْنَكُمْ أَنْ تَكُونَ أُمَّةٌ هِيَ أَرْضَى مِنْ أُمَّةٍ إِنَّمَا يَبَلُوكُمُ اللَّهُ The Allah says, Verily He will test you. That means after you've committed yourself, you always will be presented with the most likely option. Whether it's business, whether it's marriage, whether it's otherwise. As soon as you've given your word, here comes the tempting offer. Here comes something more striking, more appealing, more convincing, more awesome, more tempting in its, in its approach. But remember, إِنَّمَا يَبْلُوكُمُ اللَّهُ بِهِ When the Prophet ﷺ proposed for Aisha رضي الله عنها, I mean, imagine this. What a privilege. Prior to that, some person had already made some indications that he was interested in getting married to Aisha رضي الله عنها. The narration is mentioned in Sirat al-Mustafa of Allah Idris Kandalwi Rahmatullahi. Look at the, look at the integrity of Abu Bakr. You have the proposal of Allah Nabi at your door. You cancel any proposal to welcome such an offer. He says, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I am elated. I am overwhelmed. I am so excited that you will be my son-in-law. I cannot ask for better. But O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, someone has already given an indication. I have to first find out from him if he still wants to pursue his intentions with my daughter. If his intentions are there, then I am compelled by a verbal contract to honor this year. And if he would not, then I cannot explain my honor for you being married to my daughter. Obviously this was the divine plan of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that Aisha Rabi Allah was going to be married to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this honor and this privilege was kept in the favor of Aisha Rabi Allah So Abu Bakr then called that person and asked him to listen, I've received a fresh proposal on behalf of my daughter and I need to know where you stand, do you, do you still have your interest, are you still intending getting married or not? And then obviously he said, no, I, I, I have declined and I no longer intend pursuing my relation. And then after Aisha Rabi Allah was married to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But I'm saying, look at the level of integrity. Look at the level of discipline. The level of commitment to the honor that was made. The word that was given was honored, was respected. So that is the one aspect where you gave your word and then you went against it. And then after Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala speaks about a more severe, a more severe condition, 
ولا تتخذوا ايمانكم دخلا بينكم فتزل قدم بعد ثبوتها وتذوقوا السوء بما صددتم عن سبيل الله. The surprise to everyone. And Allah says, do not be like those. ولا تكونوا. Do not be like those that at the time, at the time of contracting, at the time of promising, at that very time your intention is to violate the promise of yours. Not as a subsequent development because you were given a better temptation. So what is you give someone your word, you intend to honor it and then somebody else can give you a better option. And you got tempted with it. The second is more grave, more severe, more devastating, more serious. And that is you are giving someone a promise, but in your heart you know you're going to violate it. The only reason you are promising him is to secure the deal, to secure whatever you want to do. The Quran says, There is fear your foot will slip after its firmness. In Ma'arif quran it is written, it means there is fear you will lose your iman. You will lose your iman. So I'm saying at all times we need to keep good intentions. Obviously, there is a difference with you, my sister, that once you study Islamic knowledge, coupled with academic knowledge, but your outlook of Islam is set with the lenses of a Muslim woman. Your vision, your approach, your, your interaction is set with the priorities of a Muslim woman. Abdullah bin Ubaid bin Sanul had six slave girls, young girls, and he used to compel them to indulge in immorality. You know, in forms of immorality and obscene behavior, where they were compelled to sell their honor to strange men. This is what he used to do. In Madari Kutan B, the, the names of these girls are also mentioned, Ma'ada, Maisa, and many other girls, six girls. When they accepted Islam, Immediately they refused and they said, we are now Muslims and we want to live a chaste life. As Muslim women, we cannot do this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then revealed the verse, وَلَا تُكْرِهُوا فَسَيَاتِكُمْ عَلَى الْبِقَاءِ إِنْ أَرَدْنَ تَحَصُّنَ لِتَبْتَغُوا عَرَضَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَنْ يُكْرِهُنَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مِنْ بَعْدِ إِكْرَاهِهِنَّ بَقُورٌ رَحِيمٌ وَلَا تُكْرِمُوا فَتَيَاتِكُمْ And do not compel your slave girls towards immorality and fornication. In أَرَدْنَا تَحَصُّنَا When they want to fortify and insulate themselves by virtue of their morality and their character and their beauty. So as Muslim sisters, we might have the academic qualifications coupled with an Islamic knowledge to have that Islamic approach. To have that Islamic identity, where this woman Asma radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Asma bin Tazayil, O Nabi of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we are the woman we sit at home, we take care of our children, we take care of the interests of our husband, we see to them, we see to their physical needs, we provide for them, and they have four privileges of us. وَقَدْ فُتِّلُوا بِنْ جُمْعَةِ وَشُهُودِ الْجَنَائِ They have Jum'a with them. They have Janada in their life. Then they also strive in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all these privileges, they can go for Jum'a Salah. They can go for Jama'a for congregational prayer. They can go for Janada, they can attend the funeral. And they can go in the path of Allah. Four teams. We are deprived of this here. We sit at home, we are denied this opportunity. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, convey my salam to her. And he asked the Sahaba first, have you ever heard of a woman asking a more intelligent question than this woman? Have you ever heard of a more profound question being echoed by your sister? And Sahaba said, no, Nabi of Allah, we've never heard. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I salute your question. I salute your question. I really compliment the many in which what you are. That these four things we don't have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the first. لِلْرِكَانِ نَصِيبٌ مِّنْ مَكْتَسَبُ وَلِلْنِسَاءِ نَصِيبٌ مِّنْ مَكْتَسَبُ وَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمًا 
for the men is the reward of what they have done. For the women is the reward of what they have done. ولا تتمنوا ما فضل الله به بعضكم على بعض. And do not aspire for the privileges that Allah has identified exclusively with a selective gender. For the men is what they will do, for the women is what they will do. There are certain things Allah has given to a woman. A man cannot have the reward of giving birth. A man cannot have the reward of nursing a child. A man cannot have the reward of the pains of pregnancy because he cannot contend with it. In the same way, a woman cannot have those things in their own way. On a lighter note, it is written in the Tafsir that the woman said, We all come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then just as the man first said, our inheritance in this world is double of that of the woman. So we hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our reward in Jannah will also be double of the woman. So who would have a war with woman? So the woman said we make dua to Allah just as our inheritance is half of the man, our punishment and our sin will also be half of the man in Akhirat. If our inheritance is half here, inshallah our punishment and our army and our vice will also be half of that of, of, of the men in Akhirah. وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَطَّرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ مَعْبَكُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْبُ فُرِّدَانِ نَصِيبٌ مِّنْ مَكْتَسَبُ وَلِلْنِسَاءِ نَصِيبٌ مِّنْ مَكْتَسَبُ Again, coming back to the point that I was discussing and I, I, I want to focus on the theme here is in life the need of keeping clean intentions. You deal with anyone, deal with a clean intention. You enter an institution and roll with a good intention. If your heart is clean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the clean results and effect of that back to you. The hadith of the Prophet said, Man akhada amwal al-nas yuridu adha'aha as-sallahu anhu. If a person borrows money with the intention of pay, Allah will make divine arrangements for the payment of that. But if you borrow and your intention is not to pay people, then Allah will destroy that wealth. There is a hadith in Bukhari Sharif that a person had borrowed money from someone in the previous nation. And the time came to pay the person back. The time came to pay the person back. Now, he came out, he needed to cross the river, but there was no boat. The hadith appears in Bukhari Sharif. There was no boat to cross. How does he say the cross? So he took a piece of plank of wood. He dug it inside, made it little hollow, he put the money inside and closed it, and he left this to sail on the bank, left this to sail on the water. And he said, Allah, I promise this man, he will be anticipating my money, if he's right, if he's due, perhaps he has commitments to honor because of the promise I have made. I don't have means to get to him, O Allah. You make arrangements that this money reaches the rightful owner, O Allah. And he left this piece of plan to sail. Now I often say we think we have internet banking, that's what water banking, uh, electronic transfer, and then also if the computers are down, sorry sir, there's nothing I can do, all system is down, computers are down, so it just comes to a halt. And from time to time, Allah shows us our feebleness, our inability, how dependent we are as creatures. And if one power shuts down and it brings a halt to the entire city, nothing is operating, no flight is taking off, no bank is operating, no transfer is happening manually, electronically, nothing. All is down complete, there is a drop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the human time and the human race of his or her feebleness and how instantly Allah can take everything. إِنْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ سَمْعَكُمْ وَأَبْصَارَكُمْ وَخَتَمَ عَلَى قُلُوبِكُمْ مَنْ إِلَاهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِهِ قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَتَاكُمْ عَذَابُ اللَّهِ بَغْتَةً أَوْ جَهْرَةً أَنْ يُهْلَكُ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الظَّالِمُونَ قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ اللَّيْلَ سَرْمَدًا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ اللَّهُ سَيَجْعَلُ لَكُمْ سِفْرًا لَيْلًا قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَا أُكُمْ غَوْرًا فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَاءٍ مَعِينٍ 
say unto them, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if I decide the water must go so deep into the earth, then none of them have access, who will give you water? Say unto them, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if I instantly decide to seize your vision and bar your hearing, who will restore your faculties? Say unto them, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Ajatum Adabu Mahi Qabhatat and Al Jahra, if the torment of Allah has to grip you suddenly, openly, or secretly, then who will be able to combat it? Say how to the, say to them, Apa amina nabi na makaru sayyihat, ay yaksim allahu bihimu al-arba, aw ya'ti lahumul adabu min haytu la yash'urun, aw ya'khudahum fi taqallubihim fama'um bin wa'adidin. Say how to them, I can grip them, I can see them in their movements to and fro. So a person is walking, suddenly they have a sharp pain, and then he's present. And it becomes excruciating. And then he goes, oh, and they say, oh, you know what? There's a tumor. It's malignant. Oh, we have to operate. How oh, does the sister start to operate? Some sort of pain. Oh, ya akhudahum fi taqallubihim. I can grip them. Taqallub ya taqallubu in the movement. While walking, while jogging, while working. Fahabun bi mu'ajideen. They cannot weaken me. Oh, ya akhudahum ala taqawu. Allah radhi Allah is to say, eh, ala taqawus. I can see them gradually. So it doesn't come one time, it happens gradually. You don't feel it. Gradually Allah takes your health. Gradually Allah takes your wealth. By the time you realize a millionaire has become a pauper and health of an active man has become better than. So anyway, this man puts his money in his house. And that man comes out, the owner, the creditor, and he anticipates, he sees this little wood sailing about he gets to it, opens it up, subhanAllah, there's a note there, his money is there, he's all excited, he's all elated. I often say, anytime you pay a person, it's right back. Anytime you go and pay a man, it's right back. And anytime you go and ask for your money, it's wrong back. In the beginning of the month, oh, I'm glad, you know, this business is quiet. Middle of the month, I do all my banking. End of the month, I put my merchants. So, you know how it is. So anytime you collect your money, it's a long time. Anytime you pay someone, it's perfect time. Human nature is like that. He takes his money, he's happy. Sometimes later he's to meet up and says, My brother, I'm so sorry. I owed you money the day I wanted to come. I wanted to give it to you. But you know what? I didn't have access. He says, No, no, but your money reach me safe and sound. What are you talking? And these are the words of Nabi Alayhi Salaam in Bukhari. We don't doubt the words of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have an absolute, we, we doubt what our eyes see. We doubt what our eyes see, we doubt what our ears hear. We do not doubt what Allah Nabi has said. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, every day in the morning when we rise, all the organs collectively flee before the tongue. Whether I can hear it or not, fathom it or not, comprehend it or not, Allah Nabi said it, I believe it. All the organs flee before the tongue. And they say to the son, we are at your mercy. In it, stakam ta is stakam na. Wa in it, our judge is our judge na. If you will utter a good word, then our day will go peaceful. And our day you bless the wrong and we have to contend with the consequences. The level of submission that Abu Bakr and Omar had on the words of Nabi Ali Sarah was phenomenal. Nabi Ali Sarah said in the previous nation, the person was mounted onto a cow. And he started riding a cow. So the cow said, I have not been created as a mode of transport. So the Sahaba were around and said, Oh, Nabi of Allah, did we understand you correctly? You said the cow spoke. Subhanallah, Baqaratun tatakallam. Did I get the right side? Nabi Sahasim said, If you have reservation, all you are apprehensive, good luck to you, and you can do what you feel. I know my Abu Bakr and Umar have accepted it without questioning it. And the beauty of my Abu Bakr and Umar were present. I know my Abu Bakr and Umar have accepted it. Abu Jahal heard that the Prophet made Mi'raj direct from Allah's Nabi. Allah's Nabi told him he denied it. Abu Bakr heard from Abu Jahal directly to Nabi Alayhi Salaam he accepted it. When, when the incident of Mehran happened, Abu Jahl was happy that now we got ammunition. Now look at what your man is talking. Now look at what foolish things he is breathing on Ayyadu Billah. So now I'm going to defeat Abu Bakr. What did he say? He said in a portion of the night, he's gone to the heavens. And so if you do Arabic grammar in Quran, you will know. 
سبحان الذي أصرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد عدود ليل ذي نكرة في التنوير أي شيء يسير من الليل in a very small portion of the night not in the entire night through the Arabic grammar we understand this here but Abu Dhabi said that Allah Zabi said it immediate compliance immediate submission so what Allah Zabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us wholeheartedly we accept it we have no doubt in it Mu'ad radiallahu anhu used to say innakum obtulitum bi fitnati barra wa sabartum وَإِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الصَّرَّاءِ أَلَا وَهِيَ النِّفَاقِ إِذَا تَحَلَّيْنَ بِالْفَرَاقِ وَلَبِسْنَ رِيقَ الشَّعَرِ وَعَصْفَ الْيَبَنِ فَأَتْعَبْنَا الْغَنِي وَكَلَّفْنَا الْفَقِيرِ مَا لَا يُتِيكَ Then all you group of Sahaba, Allah tested you with poverty, you persevered. But I'm telling you, there is a great death of effort, of, 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 of prosperity. Adversity, Allah tested you, you persevered. Then comes the death of prosperity. And I'm referring to women. And I'm referring to your wives and your daughters. إِذَا تَحَلَّيْنَ بِالْزَّرَادِ وَلَبِسْنَ رِيْقَ الشَّعْرِ وَعَصْبَ الْيَمَنِ Who will insist on wearing the fine garments? Who will insist on wearing the exclusive garments? فَأَتْعَبْنَ الْغَنِي وَكَلَّفْنَ الْفَقِيرِ These women will tire the poor husband and burden the wealthy husband. فَأَتْعَبْنَ الْغَنِي وَكَلَّفْنَ الْفَقِيرِ مَا لَا يُتِيرِ Anyway, again I'm saying, in every intention of ours, in every endeavor of ours, we have good intention. Remember this, the hadith that I quoted is the opening hadith of Mishkat Sharif as well, Umar radiallahu narrated, and that is pertaining to the nobility of intention, that a person made hijrat, but he made hijrat to get married, muhajiri um mehtaif, he made hijrat, now hijrat is such a great virtue, that Nabi alayhi salam said, Ama alim ta anna al-hijrat ta tahdimu ma kana qabraha, that when you migrate, Allah forgives all your sins, but he migrated for the sake of women, his intention was not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His intentions were otherwise. So he had to endure all the difficulties. He had to endure all the difficulties. But effectively there was no reward. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Before Qiyamah, people of my ummah will go to ummah for every reason but the correct reason. For every intention but the correct intention. Sa'udju abniyahu ummati littanazuhi. وَأَوْصَاتُهُمْ لِلْتِجَارَةِ وَقُرَّاهُهُمْ لِلْرِيَاءِ وَالسُّمْعَةِ وَفُقَرَاهُهُمْ لِلْمَسْأَلَةِ Nabi alayhi salam said, A time will come, the wealthy of my ummah will make Makkah and Medina a place of relaxing, unwinding and entertainment. So have a break. Last year we went to Paris, this year we're going to Saudi for a break. سَأُجُّ أَغْنِيَاهُ أُمَّةِ لِلْتَنَزُّهِ وَأَوْصَاتُهُمْ لِلْتِجَارَةِ And the middle class will go to Mecca and Medina for business, commerce and trade. وَقُرَّاهُهُمْ لِلْرِيَانِ وَالسُّمْعَةِ And the learned will go for fame and recognition. My numbers are the biggest, my groups are the largest, my followers are the most, my agency is the best. وَقُرَّاهُهُمْ لِلْمَسْأَلَةِ and the poor of my ummah will converge on the plains of Arafah to beg from the whole world other than Allah. I'm afraid today there is no nobility of intention. Everybody has ulterior motives. There is no cleanliness of intention. Umar radiallahu said, مَنْ أَبْعَرَ مِنْكُمْ خَيْرًا بَدَلَّا بِهِ خَيْرًا وَأَحْبَبْنَاهُ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ أَبْعَرَ مِنْكُمْ شَرًّا بَدَلَّا بِهِ شَرًّا وَأَبْعَبْنَاهُ عَلَيْهِ سَعَائِرُكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَ رَبِّكُمْ Whoever will deal with me with a clean intention, I will deal with him with a clean intention. And whoever will deal with me with an evil intention, I will be compelled to deal with him accordingly. I will be compelled by circumstances. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of an incident in the Qur'an of few brothers. The Muqassirin say this orchard was in Yemen and Sana'a, the capital, some say it was Hamsha and Asimha. There is speculation of its precise location. Be it as it may, the incident is mentioned in the Quran Karim in Surah Noon in the 29th Juz. There was this father who had this fortune of his, who had this harvest, this farm, this plantation of his, and he was a very good man, he was a very kind man, he was a very decent person, he had wonderful things. Every time he used to harvest his crops, the poor people used to come. 
and routinely he used to give them a share. He used to give them a share. So then he was trying to harvest the crops, the poor used to come over and give them some crops, and then he used to take the others home, some for his family, others in the marketplace, and the man loved his life and moved on. The poor man, his family ate and life moved on. When the old man died and the children inherited, the youngsters thought they were smart. They thought they were wise. They thought they knew better than the old man. So they said, no, 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 this is not on. We, we you know, it, it's against our business understanding. It's against our operation. It's against our mechanism. It's against the way we operate as business people. So what they decided is now nobody will get free. Anybody wants, he must come to the marketplace and he must buy. But what we'll do is we'll go harvest late night, early morning before the beggars realize. So by the time they will come, it will be harvested, they will find nothing, and someone must just refer them to the marketplace. Now let's tell you what I'm saying, my sister, is evil of intention. They haven't yet done anything, pollution, contamination has stepped into their intention. But this has a ripple effect in the other world of Allah that unfolds. One is my world who I as you and I love, and we do things. But in the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where decisions are made, that, that translates into a different form. It comes out into a different shape. The Quran says about this, They advanced while they were whispering. They were so particular that they didn't want the poor people to hear, so they started whispering. At the heart in Arabic means to whisper. Allah yadakulanna al yawma alaykum miskeen. No poor person is going to come. My father did it that these days. Things that life has changed, things have evolved. We were living in the new 21st century. Move up to the times. It's the era of innovation. Allah yadakulanna al yawma alaykum miskeen. وَغَدَوْا عَلَىٰ أَرْضٍ قَادِرِينَ That night, before they could come, Allah sent a divine fire that burned the entire garden, farm and orchard. Complete. Allah reduced it to smithering. But that's not all. The Quran says, وَغَدَوْا عَلَىٰ أَرْضٍ قَادِرِينَ They advanced convinced that they will deny the poor. Qadir, we in control. It's ours. How many places Allah says in the Quran? إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ مِمَّا يَأْكُلُ النَّاسُ وَالْأَنْعَامِ حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَتِ الْأَرْضُ زُخْرُفَهَا وَزَّيَّنَتْ وَظَنَّ أَهْلُهَا أَنَّهُمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَيْهَا Allah says, oh man, you are so weak. The example of this world is like a garden. The rain came down, like, and the, the, the vegetation grew, and the crops were ready to be harvested. And the farmer felt, it's my prime time, and I'm in control. All his students graduate, and it is his graduation ceremony, and it is today is my V-Day. All this couple were planning to get married, and today is their wedding day. I read now in the newspaper while I was crying tragically about the plane in Pakistan that crashed. May Allah make it easy for the victims and give tender to the Muslims among them who have passed away. Among them was a newly wet couple that were on their honeymoon. A newly wet. What must have been their aspirations? What must have been their desires? They got married the day before they boarded that flight. This was part of their holiday. This was part of their honeymoon. Faith came the way Allah decided differently. Allah says, the ayat karima that you think you're in control, you think you're in authority, today is my day, I bought over this company, they will be giving me the keys, I will be entering, today I will be sworn into office, I will be sworn into parliament, I will be sworn into a position. Allah says, that very nice, I decide differently. And I destroy you and your crop and your place completely. And I don't fear how the creation will interpret my decisions. I don't fear how the creation will interpret my decisions. Anyone in this world, regardless of his political power and strength, has to accommodate how my 
statement will play out to the masses, will play out in the political arena, will play out in the broader world, will people accept it or ask you, Allah said, Wala ya khafu I don't care what you will say, and I don't care how you will react to it, I will decide what I have to decide. So Allah destroys this entire path. The children are going, when they come to this orchard, again what was it, my key point, evil of intention, contamination in their endeavors, pollution in their intent. It was destroyed in such a way that for a moment they thought, that actually this is somebody else's fault. The Quran says, these are not my explanations. فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهَا قَالُوا إِنَّا لَقَالُونَ The instant reaction, impulsive reaction, oh sorry, 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 when we, it's night and we're not seeing properly, we've actually come to the neighbor's path, we don't go back and make sure we go to our path. فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهَا قَالُوا إِنَّا لَقَالُونَ بَلْ نَحْنُ مَحْرُومُونَ they look back, they said, no, this is not the neighbor's farm, this is our own farm. Now, the little grand brother, he was, he was empty this idea. And he told them, you know, don't make evil intentions, don't do this. But obviously, they overpowered him and he had to succumb and he told the lie. But now when he seen the ruination and the destruction, he obviously got on him and said, I've been telling you people, you know what, let's not make these evil intentions. قَالَ أَوْسَتُهُمْ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ لَوْ لَا تُسَبِّحُونَ قَالُوا سُبْحَانَ رَبِّنَا إِنْ كُنَّا لَقَالِمِ Immediately they confess, O oh Allah, we've realized the evil effect of our intentions. We've realized the evil effect of our intentions. So what I'm saying to you, my brother and my sister, is you are you're learning the knowledge of Deen here. In every venture of life, keep clean intentions. The purpose of that will be wholesome. And Allah will give you good reward. Another very important thing is, when we make intentions, we must honor them. Once one brother gave me an incident of this, he said there was a collection drive or some tragedy that had happened. So this was back home in South Africa. So anyway, throughout the week they've been making announcements that on Friday after Juma there will be a collection campaign for a particular earthquake or flood or whatever it is for the victims of that place. He said, in my heart I decided I will give a thousand rand. A thousand rand, you looking at the... Uh, this is about 150 US. For 150 US dollars, I said I will give him Salah. That's my intention I've made. Anyway, it came Friday, and they came around to say that, you know what, there's a collection drive taking place here. Please come forward and donate. So I've seen somebody gave $10, someone gave $20. So I thought to myself, even if I give 50, I will still be the king. Even if I give 50, I'm still going to reign supreme, yeah? You know what, because people are giving 5, 10, so I changed my mind and I dropped the fifty dollar. And in my mind I thought to myself, I saved myself a good hundred. I saved myself a good hundred. This is what I had intended for. I changed and I'm clean and I still gave the most people a mashallah, you know, you gave good. He said I barely came out and my son drove and he smashed the car before it was wrong. Which cost me much, much more. And then I repented to Allah and I said, Allah, if I've ever made an intention with you, I will honor it. If I have ever made an intention with you in my life, my Allah, I will honor my intention, I will value my intention, and I will not violate my intention. That about in Jannah, we have kept it exclusively. لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادَ For those who don't have intentions of pride and arrogance in this world. For those who do not have evil intentions. لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادَ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And the good abode is for the pious in Jannah. I'm going to mention one hadith and wrap it up. The hadith appears in Tirmidhi Sharif. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith has literally drawn a graph. And he has categorized the entire world into one of four categories. And this again is the profoundness of the comprehensive and the wholesome nature of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he has given such a diagram, such a diagram, that the entire world fits under this diagram into one of four categories. 
you cannot be out like this diagram. Now just imagine, this was Nabi Alayhi Salaam's amazing mannerism of teaching that the whole world put into one or four diagrams. He said there are four types of people in this world. Abdin Razakullah Ilman wa Mahalim. One is that sister or father whom Allah has given the knowledge of thee. My sisters, there is no word that can encapsulate the privilege that Allah has afforded you. Again, provided the intention is clear. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man ta'allama Allah la yata'allamuhu illa li yusiba bihi aradam min al-dunya lam yadid arad al-jannah. If a sister or a brother acquires the senses of Islam with the intention of getting material benefit, material benefit, then such a person, despite all his knowledge, Allah will deprive him not only from paradise, from the fragrance of paradise also. On a lighter note, my youngest son, he was going to school the other day, so they asked him, what do you want to become in the world, you know, when you grow up? So he said, no, I want to become an alim, I want to become a Murana, an imam. I asked him why. He said, so nice, I see my dad, he flies around the whole world. Everyone just calls him, invites him, puts him up with his great one hour, two hour lectures and everything is wrong. I said, subhanAllah, what do the children get on life and which side of the stick have they picked up? Why you want to become? It's easy, man. It's a great life. It's a found life. It's a provided life. I said, my son, come and speak and then see what it is all about. مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ عِلْمًا مِمَّا يُبْتَ بَعْنِهِ وَذْهُ اللَّهِ The woman who applies the knowledge of Deen with the evil intent with all her knowledge and with all his knowledge Allah will throw him in hell. So the intention has to be key. So anyway, the first person is a sister or a brother whom Allah gave knowledge of Deen and Allah gave wealth also. So he has the best of both the worlds. He's pious and he's wealthy. He really has a stable. It's good himself covered relatively well. He's got an Islamic approach, an Allah conscious approach, and he as well. After Radakahullah Ilman wa Malik, for who will get the fee here up for who? Or yet the fee here up in a who? For us, I've been up for him, man. So he is a very intelligent man. He fears Allah with his money, he fears Allah with his health, with his knowledge, whatever he has. And he stands with that well in the path of Allah, joining the side with the poor, helping the needy. Nabi Sassim said he is the best of people. Allah gave him health, Allah gave him wealth, Allah gave him knowledge, that's the key word. And he uses it in obedience of Allah. Then comes the second person. And Nabi Sallallahu says, Abdin Radakahullahu Ailman Walam Yarzukhu Mala. There's another category, Allah gave that sister knowledge. Allah gave that other knowledge of thee, meaning piety, Allah consciousness. But he or she doesn't have wealth. So they're not wealthy, they're not affluent, they're breaking even, living head to mouth, passing the days and moving on. But like any human who doesn't have wealth, inherently we all aspire for wealth. When the leaders came into Medina, Omar Rabbi Allah said, Oh Allah, I am not among those who say that I don't like wealth. Because we all like it. I am asking you Allah, let me use it in your region. I am not saying, Oh Allah, I don't like it. I am saying, but he used to cry. When the, when the spoils of, of, of Iraq and again he cried. So Qafani the whole said, Ada yomu sururi. This is the day of joy. He said, don't you know the side effects of wealth? You know they tell you in the fine appearance in the brief the reverse side of the leaflet. But it's so small that you can't read it very well. But anyway, drowsiness, headache, sickness, constipation, long term usage can lead to critical conditions and all the rest of it is the side effect. He said, don't you know the side effects of wealth? So, Abdul Rahman ibn Ahab said, no, I don't know. He said, the side effects of wealth is jealousy, pride, antagonism, severity of ties. This is part of the package of wealth. These are all the side effects of wealth. So you take the tablet, it comforts your headache, you feel nice, but long term it is making it damaging to the system. So Abdul Rahman is to say, Allah has money, let us use it in your deal. مَا أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عَبْدٍ بِنِعْمَةٍ أَوْفَى مِنَ الْعَافِيَةِ وَكُلُّ مَنْ عُوْفِيَ فِي كَسَدِهِ فَهُوَ فِي عِيْسَةِ الرَّابِيَةِ وَالْمَالُ حُلُّهُنْ حَسَنٌ جَيِّدٌ عَلَى الْفَتَى لَكِنَّهُ عَارِيَةِ 
ما أحسن الدنيا لكنها ما أحسنها غدارة فانية. تقول that there's nobody who has a greater gift than good health. وكل من عوفي في جسده فهو في عيشة راضية. And if you have good health, then consider yourself a king. والمال حلو حسن جيد. And wealth enhances the beauty of a young man. If young, if in his prime and he has wealth, it just makes him so much more awesome. It makes him so much more attractive. ما أحسن الدنيا لكنها ما أحسنها غدارة فانية. How beautiful this world is, because what is beauty is equally deceptive. One of my scholars used to tell us, the condition of this world is like an elderly woman who has put a lot of makeup on her face. So she's done a lot of, you know what, uh, makeup and she's covered herself and uh, cosmetic surgery. So at this distance she looks young, she looks charming, she looks stunning, she looks attractive, and you are tempted to her. But then you get closer to her, and that makeup starts fading away. You start seeing the wrinkles and the crinkles on her face. And you say, oh, she's aged. She's really moved on. But she was looking so young and attractive from a distance. Well, this is this world, my sister. This is this world, my brother. It looks glittering. It looks gold. But as you get into it, it sucks you in. It swallows you in. It turns you in. It makes Many a times people forsake their parents, forsake their law, forsake their deed. So, it comes with a price. Anyway, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the second sister or brother is the person whom Allah gave piety, but Allah did not give her the wealth of this world. Abdin razaqahu Allah wa ilman wa lam yarzaqhu maala. Fahu wa sadiqu liya. But the sister and the brother has good intentions. What's the topic? Good intentions. So what does the sister say? What does the brother say? لو أن لي مالا لعملت فيه بعمل فلان. If Allah ever gives me money, if Allah ever gives me money, then I will also do good things like so and so. If Allah gives me money, I will help the poor. If Allah gives me money, I will do this. But it's easy to say when you don't have it. You can promise your wife, you know what? If I had money, I would have taken you, but you didn't know the thirteen check is coming. When the 13th check comes, then they say, my wife, my wife, no. You start with the fridge needs that we say, and the kitchen needs to be repurposed. Muhammad ibn Munkadi was one of the great Tabiwis of Islam. He came to our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. He said, I'm in a crisis. Aisha radiallahu anha said, I'm so sorry, I don't have a dime with me. But you're such a person, if I had 10,000 dirhams, I wouldn't have a day, then I wouldn't wink my eye, I would have given it to you. He walks out, someone knocks on the door. If I shall be Allah a present, he says, yes. He said, I just got a humble gift. And he comes and drops the 10,000 dirhams in the lap of Aisha. I shall be Allah and looked at the heavens and he said, Oh my Allah, you put my words to test instantly. Oh my Allah, you put my words to test instantly, Allah. You put me on the line immediately. I daily committed and here you gave it. Aisha radiallahu anha, she was Aisha, she was the daughter of Abu Bakr, she was the wife of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was not my Aisha or your Aisha. She didn't grow up in the lap of luxury, she grew up a life of abstinence. Imam Zuhri said, Look to me, I'm a nasi kulli wa alim wa Aisha. Put the knowledge of the whole world one side and put the knowledge of Aisha on one side. Her knowledge is greater than the whole world together. Abu Musa al-Shari said, ما اشتكل علينا أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم شيئا إلا سألنا عائشة. We that is Sahaba Abu Musa said he said every time we couldn't resolve the hadith we used to go and knock the door and we speak to our mother Aisha explain to me the hadith. There's no shuru ahad those days. No commentary. Imagine what a profound legacy of Aisha that even the prominent Sahaba knocked the door. Aisha رضي الله عنها said call Muhammad ibn Munkadir. He was still walking out. And what happened? He said, "I said, Allah is calling you." And he gave her. He, she, he gave him. She gave him the ten thousand dirhams, and he said, "Allah has tested me. This is what I told you, and here the money is. Here the money is." So the second person is the one who is sincere in their intentions. Allah will test you. Easy to say. Talk is cheap. I read a nice article in the paper the other day. 
they say talk is cheap. The only thing that is cheap, even when there's a credit crunch, is talk. They say it's fighting through the economy and the ripple effect. And you know what? There is this economic meltdown. Everything can drop down, but talk is cheap. Even in a crisis, talk is cheap. So it's easy, easier said than done. So the second person, my sister, is Allah gave her knowledge, but she doesn't have wealth, but she is sincere. What does she say? Lo annani malam namin to fi the amali kula. If Allah gives me, I will use my money to help the poor to do this. Now, what did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? For ajruhuma sawa. The first person owned money, built matrepa, helped the people, dug wells, assisted the poor, and entered Jannah. The second person did own a giant, but aspired to own to do good. Nabi Ali Sallam said, in Jannah, they both will be on the same and a common level. Allah will not differentiate between them. What we call the intention was. But obviously, Allah knows the intention. The intention will be the third person, the third person. Abdin Razaqahu Allah Umanan wa Lam Yarzuku Ilma. He is a wicked person. The second was fortunate out of the two, he or she had knowledge, they didn't have wealth. The third is it's reversed. The person has wealth, doesn't have piety, doesn't have deen, doesn't have Allah in his or her life, but have wealth. You know, ample of wealth, abundance of wealth. So because of the wealth, the luxury of wealth, so he or she feels that I am at liberty. The biggest statement, or the most harmful statement we can make is, we consider our leisure time and our surplus wealth as our personal commodity. It belongs to me. This is my time. I have no time. Adam ya Adam bi Allah ya Allah is watching us and we are answerable for Allah every second. So the third person has wealth, but that person does not have any piety, does not have any deed. So that person abuses his or her wealth in evil, in vice, and we see today the places of sin that is happening. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to those who use their wealth in his disobedience as the brothers of the devil. إِنَّ الْمُبَدِّرِينَ كَانُوا إِخْوَانَ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِرَبِّهِ كَفُورًا Verily those who waste their wealth. There are two terms in the Quran. One is Israq, one is Tabdeer. Israq means to be extravagant in lawful things. So you go, you know, on a, on a very extravagant choice, lawful, legitimate, permissible, that you could buy a watch for 100 or 200 dollars, suddenly you buy a watch for 10,000 US dollars for a brand, for a name, for a particular like or choice or whatever. That is Israq where you exceed the limits in permissible things. And then there is Tadbeer, and Tadbeer means to spend in unlawful and forbidden things. So in unlawful things, even if it is a cent, even if it is a penny, even if it is a rupee, even if it is just a meager amount, it is forbidden because it is in the disobedience of Allah. So those who spend in evil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are the brothers of the devil. In Bayan quran it is mentioned what is the common thread between them and the devil. Allah gave the devil intellect, he abused his intellect against Allah. He used his logic against Allah. Allah gave you wealth, you're using your wealth against Allah. So effectively abuse of the bounties of Allah, this is how they become the brothers of the devil. So the third person, she doesn't have the knowledge of deen, she has wealth, she abuses her wealth. Nabi Ali Islam said, Father, we akhbatil manabil. This is the most wicked out of the four persons, and he will suffer, or she will suffer the worst of all in hell. Now comes the fourth person, tragic indeed, tragic indeed. No piety and no wealth. So doesn't have the goods, the first person was the best. As the best of both the worlds, the consciousness of Allah, the piety, as well as wealth, really enjoy the good life. The fourth person devoid of both. No deen, no wealth. Because, now listen to this, this is the key thing. Because of the absence of piety, she or he also desired wealth, but with evil intentions. Common to the second, aspiring for wealth, because the second and the fourth didn't happen. The Hadith of Tirmidhi. I mean, look at Nabi Ali Salaam's explanation. How wholesome, you can just marvel at this diagram. So the fourth is common to the second that is going well. So they both aspire for well. The second has piety, so aspiring for the right reason. The fourth doesn't have piety, so aspiring for the wrong reason. Nabi Ali Salaam said, if I own money, I'll also go to a club, I'll also go to a casino, I'll also do this, I'll also do that. 
نبی علیہ السلام و سلام سے تحویز ضرور ہوگا سوا The poor person loves like the poor person, dies like the poor person. But because she desired to own money for the wrong reason, she would suffer the same consequences like the third person who spent his or her money in evil and vices. So effectively, either you own it or you aspire to own it. When you aspire to own it, either you have good intentions or evil intentions, and accordingly Allah will categorize us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this institution, the sisters, and the staff, the Asasiva and everyone, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our heart and our mind and our thoughts of all evil intentions and give us cleanliness of intentions in everything that we do. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim alhamdulillah ar-Rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala shukil anbiya'i wal mursaleen Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa qana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina a'adab al-nar Allahumma ja'ali ijtima'a ala hadu ijtima'a amma al-qawma wa tafarrukana min ba'dihi tafarrukam ma'asuma ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا ولا معنا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم حبيب الينا الايمان وبينه في قلوبنا وكره الينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان اللهم اجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم اهد شباب المسلمين واجعلهم غداة المهتدين اللهم اهد نساء المسلمين اللهم ارزقهن الحياء والعفاف والايمان اللهم انا نسالك من خير ما سالك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر ما استعادك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم انت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله